Hey guys, up, Andrew, and just before we start this video, I just want to address this because a couple of you guys sent me this. I thought this was a joke, like it wasn't real, like someone sent me a picture of this, but no, this is real. Um, you guys may remember I uploaded a video about a friend a few months ago when he did some shady stuff and did a whole kind of fake apology and all that stuff, and now today he is advertising a gambling website. I'm not kidding, a gambling website for a RuneScape video, not even like a RuneScape gambling website, because even those aren't shady enough for him. He's literally advertising a gambling website for like a whole minute in this video. He goes over all this great gambling stuff you can do on this site in his video. It's called stake.com, and I guess he picked that because it sounds like staking on RuneScape. Maybe if there's little kids watching his videos, they'll be fooled into going this and wasting money from their parents credit cards or who knows what's going to happen with that but uh, yeah that's kind of despicable and almost unbelievable I mean how much more shady can you get than a gambling website to advertise in a RuneScape video I mean I'm fine if you want to do like a little sponsorship with someone like an audible.com or something like that you see that all the time on YouTube even his Ironside sponsor Ironside sponsorship didn't bother me too much I mean Ironside computers are known to be way overpriced um, built very poorly and they break down very quickly, but they are a gaming related thing as you see here um, So it's understandable, but this website is so bad that it's not even legal in my region in the United States So yeah, I don't know how anyone could think this is a good idea Literally, it's banned and he's advertising it by the government. So uh, Yeah, I don't understand why he's uh, doing something like that. So I don't know. I think I'm just going to unsubscribe, and that'll be the end of that. But anyway, let's get on with the video. One cool thing to mention as well is that I recently unlocked the Community tab on YouTube, which is something you seem to get when you get to around 10,000 subscribers, which I'm not quite there yet. I think they, they're they kind of unclear about when they actually release it to people. But uh, yeah, this was the first question I asked on it. I posted a poll, and we actually got 255 votes, so thank you for everyone who voting. Uh, who voted. I think you can still vote if you really want to as well. Uh, should third-party clients be banned for old-school RuneScape? I don't think they should be banned. I was just curious to know what people would think about this. And an overwhelming 85% of people said, no, they should not be banned. And of course, I do agree with that because I use OS Buddy. I haven't tried RuneLite. I know people are very hyped up about RuneLite recently. Um, I might look into it because it does look appealing that you can get a lot of free features on it that are paid features on other clients like OS Buddy. So um, let me know if you guys use RuneLite, if it's any good, or if I should stick to OS Buddy or, or whatnot. And let me know if you guys have any ideas for how I should use this community tab. Um, I think you can really post anything you want. You could post a uh, video, a poll, an image. It looks actually kind of nice to um, have for the channel. So it's all good. So with Raids 2 coming out this week, the prices of some items are just ridiculously high. And in particular, the God Wars gear especially the Armadil gear. I noticed that the Armadil chest plate was almost 45 mil at some points, which is really insane. It's really not that hard to get one. I mean, you can go to Arma for a few hours and you'll get an Armadil piece most likely. So it's definitely actually one of the best money makers in the game right now. So I figured let's try to go get an Armadil chest plate. Um, you know, who knows, maybe we'll get the helmet or the chain skirt or the hilt. Um, none of those would be too bad as well, but who knows, maybe we'll get lucky and get the chain skirt. And this is our first trip, so let's see how we do. Worth so much right now, it's crazy. Yeah, this is making the money. Right. Like 45 mil, that's not, that's a huge item for not a lot of work here. Dragon Medhelm. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? That's, that's rarer than getting a draw. Definitely. You can get like full inventory. Or close to it. Oh, for know. sure? I'm not sure though. No, like, nice. I never really, I did them for like I've never done them either. XP. Oh my god! Oh my god! Armadale chest plate! Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. The main motherfucking money guy. That's what we dead. came here for. Oh. Holy shit. Oh. Wow, that's. This, I did no, not expect please that. No demonet please don't demonetize us. Please <laughs> don't demonetize us. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> and as Anne fucking chest plate. That's what's up, dude. So yeah, holy shit, how often does that happen? That you come to a boss thinking, okay, this item is worth a lot and I want to get this item as a drop. And we came here, first trip, we get it within 30 minutes. So yeah, very easy money made. That's over 20 mil each. You know, a little bit less than the 45 mil split because of the chins cost a lot of money here. 
and uh, yeah, we got pretty lucky outside of that D-Med. I still want to do a lot of Arma, whether the drops are worth a lot or not, even though they have been a lot recently in really the past few months, because it is the only God Wars pet I don't have still, and I know I say that a lot, and I haven't done really enough Arma to warrant any sort of complaining about that. I know there's people who have um, over 10,000 Armadil kills without the pet, which I couldn't imagine. I only have about 1,000 right now, or like 1,100 by the end of this trip, so uh, yeah, I definitely want to get that pet though, it's definitely one of the cooler ones, and it'd be super nice to have all four God Wars ones. Very few people have all four, so it would be a really cool goal to achieve. Knowing that the prices were going up for everything for Raids 2, I decided to sell my Dark Crab stack. I have 28,000 in the bank here, and I was saving these to sell at 99 fishing because I'm almost 97 right now, and it would just make, like, for a cleaner sell to sell them all at once, but I figured, you know what, they're going for a lot right now, almost a thousand each. Um, the OS Buddy price wasn't quite accurate. It's very hard to sell them for over 1,000 each, but before they were down to like 790 each, so I know that I could at least get close to 950 each for them, so I decided to sell them here, and uh, I couldn't sell them all for the same price. I had to keep like taking them out and leaving some in for a few hours. But eventually I got them all sold for right, right around 950 each, some of them for less, some of them for over 1000 each, so maybe even a little more than that. So I think it was a good decision to sell them. Usually I don't like to keep items for very long that I collect, like I don't, I never make like a Slayer tab or anything like that, but these I didn't really need the money for right away, so I figured why not just collect them and have some fun with it. But yeah, I got almost 28 or over 28 mil for them, so uh, definitely a lot of dark crab fishing down there. You can make around... 300k per hour or more fishing dark crabs, so it definitely adds up a lot, and I'm definitely going to get 99 fishing pretty soon doing dark crabs. So in line with making some more money, we're going to do some more master clues here, and also try to get the bloodhound pet. Um, starting off with a small one here, these will be in chronological order, as you can see this is my 42nd one, then I'm going to show you the 43rd one, and etc, just for a few more. Uh, of course the bloodhound pet is the main goal, but who knows, we have gotten lucky with these in the past. In the last video, or the video before that, we got the Anku Socks, which was almost 10 mil, so you never know what you're going to get. So, I really hate th this one, where you have to go through this maze from Desert Treasure. I always get lost in here. It's not the worst one, though. The worst one is definitely the Legends Quest clue step, where you have to go into that Legends Quest dungeon and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's so easy to forget something. You need to bring, like, the uh, Charge Orb spell. You need to bring lock picks, like a hammer, all that sort of shit. But uh, this one was not too bad. Open the casket, let's see what we get. Holy shit, Ale of the Gods and a Torture Ornament Kit. Not ex insanely expensive items, but both of those are a few mil each, so very, very nice reward here. I actually didn't know what these were in the first place. Obviously, you can just check the uh, Torture Ornament Kit, but I didn't know what this item was, and it's actually the item you see people at the GE with this, where you can kind of hobble around. I think they got this animation from the guy upstairs in Falador Bar on the second floor. I think he's been there since, like, 2005, so... Maybe with this item they figured they can give players a way to access this kind of hobbling idle animation. It looks pretty cool actually, but it's just cosmetic, so we might as well put the money to good use. But not sure how rare these are, I guess they're kind of pretty rare, but nothing crazy. But let's see how much they go for. I did actually want to check out the ornament kit first. These, this one is actually pretty cool, it's the monkey type of ornament kit. It makes it into like the uh, demonic gorilla type of torture amulet, which is pretty cool because that's how you build the torture amulet from the demonic gorillas, you have to kill them for the gem and such. And it's funny, I see on Twitter all the time people getting like some huge PK and they'll be like, in the loot pile there'll be an ornament kit thing. Why the hell would you bring one of these PKing and waste an extra few mil on something that's just completely cosmetic? Might buy one of these back if I ever have in, like unlimited money one day. I certainly don't, I'm still saving for an Elijah spirit shield which has gone up quite a bit. But uh, yeah, let's sell these items and they're going up for, they're going for quite a good amount of money there. That's 5.3 mil. The Ale of the Gods sold for over 2 mil, and then with the other loot as well, adds up nicely. So yeah, well over 7.5 mil made from a 15 minute clue. That's definitely worth it in my book. But the loot does not stop there. Here's another one. I had to buy a Pharaoh Scepter for this clue, which is really annoying because those are super expensive. I already had to buy one for the altar in my house, the uh, occult altar or whatever it's called. Some Onyx bolts there, nothing much. And this is a much better reward than the previous one, although not quite as good as the uh, one earlier. Look at this, a BGS ornament kit. I'm getting pretty lucky with these. Um, I guess there's a lot of things you can get from Master Clue, so I'm not getting super lucky. But yeah, they're living up to their Master requirements. Like, uh, I think I should have just about all the requirements for these, other than maybe if there's a runecrafting one, I might be in some trouble. But 
I do have 71 runecrafting now, which is better than 55 I had like a year ago. So pretty nice reward. So we're going to end with a funny clip here. I'm doing some venonatus, just minding my own business. And suddenly out of nowhere, there's some white dots. And what's going on? Boom, I'm ambushed by about a million dragon bow specs at the same time. And somehow I lived. They all hit the minimum. A whole bunch of guys with debos there. Let's take a look at that clip in slow motion again. So here we are doing venonatus. The white dots are coming on the mini map. And suddenly a million dragon heads come at the same time and every single one of them hits an 8 which is the minimum you can hit with a debo if you're not praying range that's pretty unbelievable that you can all hit an 8 I didn't think the debo was that inaccurate but uh, yeah luckily we get away no harm done when I came back to Venonatus I stood in this little square here which is single combat which means that I can't be attacked by anyone else when I'm in combat with the boss so the deboers are actually going to come back here but they are going to have a realization that they they cannot actually attack me. So they all come at the same time, and it just says that player is already in combat, and uh, yeah, they have to retreat then. So kind of funny there, nice little trick of Venonatus that I know about from doing this a lot. So uh, yeah, anyway, that's going to do it for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Please join the clan chat, Andrew ajt 62 which has been pretty active recently. Also, the Discord you can join down below. You can like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, turn the little bell on with notifications to get notified whenever I upload a new video. You can follow me on Twitter down below, and I'll follow you back if you play RS. And you can follow me on Twitch down below, and you can also support us on Patreon if you'd really like to. So anyway guys, hope everything's going good with all you guys, you guys are the best, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks guys.